Interest. What's that? Who wants to guess? I kind of explained it yesterday. You probably already know, but how do you put it in words, right? Okay. If you got money, you give it to other people so they can use it. They pay you a reward, a little fee if you like. Okay. Thank you for letting me use your money so I can do things that I need to do because I need money. I'll pay you this much. Okay. Vice versa. You're on the other end of that. You don't have a lot of money. You need the money. Okay. Well, that's the interest. Either you're receiving the interest if you lent the money or you're paying the interest if you borrowed the money. Okay. That's called a loan if you borrowed the money. And you can get loans for cars, student loans, a loan for your house. It's a special type of loan. It's called a mortgage, but it's just a loan, right? Way back when, oh, it's just, I'll record that's fine. Um, there wasn't loans for houses. 150 years ago, you want to buy a piece of property? Cash. Don't have the cash? Okay. Don't have 1500 bucks in 1890 to buy this 27 acres of land? All right, well then, I guess, I guess you rent. Okay, you can't buy it. Someone else owns it, right? They came up with mortgages a while ago. They said, well, you know, people, we want more people to buy this property, right? So let's invent this thing called a mortgage. You go in and get a big loan to buy it. Anyway, interest. The amount of money earned if you lent the money out and you have it on an investment that's what we call it I'm trying to make money I want to make as much as I can but you know you balance that with how much risk do I want to take if I had a hundred grand would I go down to Las Vegas put it all on the red 27 one spin of a wheel there's a chance I could get I don't know 10 million there's an awfully better chance I'm gonna lose it all right Okay, awfully risky. What's safer? Put it in the bank, but then you don't get as much return. Okay, the amount of money earned, your return on the investment. Think of it as a reward or the amount of money paid, not earned, on, say, a loan. Think of it as a fee, right? Here's a saying. People with money make more money. People without money, they lose more money, right? In order to make money, you need money. Term. It doesn't mean half a semester. Well, it could. In finance, it's the length of time of the loan or investment okay five-year term right one year term I'm gonna lend you this money for one year then you got to pay back or I lend it to the bank and they lend it to other people is usually how it works right and one more principle Now, this in English is spelled two different ways, right? If you're thinking about, like, the main point, the principal point, it's spelled L-E. But principal as the school principal and principal as in finance, the amount of money, is with an A-L. Now, this isn't spelling. I'm not going to mark it wrong if I ask the question. But original amount of the loan or the investment like I'm gonna lend you five grand that's the principal the amount the five thousand dollars okay so kind of familiar with this seen this stuff before okay hopefully all right example John invests one thousand bucks 
What's the name of that 1,000 bucks? It's a principle. In a, now I'm going to write this out once and then I'm going to abbreviate it every time after that. Guaranteed investment certificate. That's a whole lot of syllables. That's why we abbreviate it. GIC. Okay, a guaranteed investment certificate. If you want to impress your parents, go home tonight and tell them, hey, I learned about guaranteed investment certificates. And they'll say, what? You mean a GIC? At a bank. Okay, they can guarantee this. Hopefully the bank doesn't go bankrupt, right? But sometimes it happens. The bank, as a reward for lending the bank the money, they're going to pay him 3% a year. And then they're just going to pay it yearly. Okay, this reward. Who knows? Maybe sometimes you can get it paid monthly. Maybe it can be semi-annually, quarterly. All those are terms, periods of time. Okay. Typically, if it doesn't say, we're going to assume it's annually, yearly. Okay. If questions don't say, you assume every year it gets paid. So this one specifies, it's 3% a year, it's paid yearly for a five year, what's the word? Term, yeah, okay. So A, how much interest Does John earn a year? Some of you probably already got the answer in your head. And B, what is the total value At the wordage here is maturity. Okay, more kind of, I didn't write it under definitions, but like how much do I get back at the end of this whole thing, this investment, this term? At five years, well, how much am I going to get back? That's what it means, at maturity. Okay, what is the total value of maturity? And lastly, we're going to do a funky, quick little graph. Graph the investment over the five years. Okay. So who's good with numeracy? How much does he get a year off this thing? Yes. Okay, it's almost like he gets a prize. The first one he yells at it. Okay. They trained you really well in elementary school, didn't they? Okay, how did he do that? Well, how much interest does he earn a year? So there's lots of information here. It's in for five years. How much a year? Simply, I'm not giving you a formula yet, but some of us can do this. Thousand bucks, what does 3% mean? Some calculators actually have a percent button on them, but when we teach math, they usually don't. Okay? I need to make that a decimal, right? So 3%, move it two spots to the left. That's equal to 0 0.03 as a decimal. Thousand bucks, point. 
zero three is my reward a year. If I do that, I get thirty dollars a year. Great. I lent him a thousand bucks. At the end of the year, I can go to Subway, buy my girlfriend lunch. What a nice reward. Okay? Well, three percent isn't that much. But what if I had a million? Well, then I could maybe live off it, right? Okay. The trick is, how do you get that first million? Okay, 30 bucks a year. Basic question, but as simple as I could make it. What's the total value at maturity? Okay. I get 30 bucks a year. It's paid out each year. So at the end of year one, I got 30 bucks. How much do I get in the second year? 30 bucks. It's paid. I went to Subway again. Okay, third year, got another 30 bucks. Now I went all out and went to McDonald's. Okay, fourth year, same thing. Fifth year, same thing. How many years do I get 30 bucks? Five years times 30 bucks. What's the total value at maturity? Well, I made 150 in interest, right? But I also get my money back. So the total value at maturity is eleven $1 hundred and fifty dollars we always want to use a dollar sign too we want units right okay so without knowing formulas and stuff that's how I think we'd do it right I hope we'd all come to that conclusion okay so in a few days we're going to talk about compounding usually this money just sits there and then we get interest on the interest so I not only would get 30 bucks I would get 3% of this 30 too, and so on and so on, okay? But don't worry, that's a few days away. This is simple, what's the name of this title? That's what it means, no compounding, okay? Simple interest, it gets paid out. Now when you get questions, I don't have an example like this, but if it says paid quarterly, okay, it's the same amount of money, all they do is take up that 30 bucks and divide it by four. And instead of every once a year it's paid, they just pay it to you quarterly, okay? So 30 bucks divided by four, that's how much they pay you quarterly. If it's paid semi-annually, then you get 15 bucks every six months. But because it's simple interest, there's no compounding. It doesn't matter, okay? All right, graph it quickly, just quickly. I want to graph what? Time versus money. One of them goes on an x-axis, one of them goes on a y-axis. You guys know which one goes where? Oh, you had a 50-50 chance. Time, yeah, I know you were thinking it, you just got dyslexic. Time is always 99.9% .9 of the time independent it goes on the x-axis okay so this is time I want five years we started at zero of course there's one two three four five years okay did I start out so if times there money goes there did I start out with zero dollars or did I start out with some amount of money I started out with a thousand bucks, right? This line doesn't go through the origin. Here's a thousand. And if I want to be accurate, I need to break this graph because, okay? It doesn't actually, it's not consistent. I need to break the graph, okay? You know what that means? Great. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Okay? So I put in a thousand bucks. At one year, how much money do I have? How much did I get after one year? I got 30 bucks. So the value of this investment is now 10.30, right? So I started off at 1,000, put a point there, put one at 10.30. How much do I have after two years? 10.30 plus 30 is 10.60. I got a point there. The next year, I got 1090, another 30 bucks, right? And then 
Eleven twenty, and then in year five, another thirty bucks. Okay. So what we should have here, what do we notice about these points? Now I didn't use graph paper, but it should make a line. Okay, so if it doesn't fix it. Okay. That's the key point here. This is linear. This can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. But y is dollars. And x is time. So I could write this in the form dollars equals whatever the slope is times time plus what's the y-intercept? Well, it's a thousand bucks. Okay, y equals mx plus b. Because compounding interest isn't going to make a line. It's going to be curved. Okay, so we got to know the difference. This is simple. So if all you do is memorize that, it should be an easy mark on a test, right? you forget then you know you can still get the mark you got to sit there and figure it out for a while well simple interest means it goes up in equal amounts okay makes a linear graph but if you just memorize that it's a lot easier so that's kind of doing it without knowing anything okay I hope you could maybe come up with those but now we're going to teach you how to do it with the formula so it works for not only that but a lot more complicated questions too As formulas, so we just kind of did this in our head. The total interest I is, well, I took my principal and I multiplied it by my rate. And then to get the total amount, what did I do? How many years was it in there for? I multiplied it by 5, okay? That's what we did. We got 150 bucks. So in general, for any amount, for any rate, and for any period of time, I just use variables. The interest is P for principal, R for rate, and what's a nice variable to use for time? Hey, it actually makes sense. Look at that. Okay. And this is because when we have a whole bunch of formulas and we don't know which one's what, you got to know that's for simple. Doesn't work for compounding. Yes. One. That's just for interest, not for the total amount we get back. You're one step ahead of me. Hang on. Right? Okay, that'll give me 150 bucks, won't it? Right? Okay, so that's just for the interest. Now, like someone's trying to forecast here. That doesn't tell me how much I actually get back, right? That just gives me my interest. But they don't keep the thousand bucks. That would be, that would be stupid right why would I give them a thousand bucks and they give me the interest back and then they keep my thousand obviously I'm gonna get my principal back how do I do that well in this formula I would need to add my principal back to get the total amount at maturity right so the value of the investment 